thank you for watching. Well, presuming, of course, that you are actually going to watch and this isn't a bit of a mistake. If so, it's okay. I won't tell anyone. You can move on. <laughs> but if not, if you would like to see how B6 and Personal Wide compare and why you might want to choose one over the other, then stick with me because I'll be going through everything I can possibly think of to help you with B6 and Personal Wide sizes. So here we go then. So first of all, how does B6 and Personal Wide compare to some of the other sizes? Now, first of all, I'm just going to flash up my planner size guide. Um, I tend to have this on my listings quite a lot. So you can have a look. I'll just leave it on the screen there for a minute. So <laughs> I'll show you one here then. All of the really common planner sizes. I've also indicated on there the Louis Vuitton like equivalents uh, because those drop in on some of those sizes, but they have different labels for those. So you can see each paper guide, paper size rather, has uh, the millimetres and the inches by the side of it. Now I'm going to be dealing in centimetres or millimetres today. Apologies if you're an inches person, but I do mention it. I'll try and mention it as often as I can, but it's just like some sort of alien language to me. <laughs> Full disclosure, I just use Google. Um, <laughs> I honestly that's one of my most used tabs I think what is this in inches anyway <laughs> I will stop waffling oh my goodness that hasn't taken me long to <laughs> waffle at all has it anyway so all right off the screen so b6 then compared to a5 is like the next main size down now if I can just grab my a5 planner for you or grab my trusty molden and show you an overlay so there is my huge a5 molden and here is my b6 van der speck on the top now planner covers aren't necessarily the same size and proportion for the same planner size let me show you my B6 Kiki K in comparison. Look, it's got a different kind of proportion. Can you see it's less square? But I'm sure you can tell from that, hopefully anyway, that the page size inside is just that bit smaller. If I take out, just wondering what I've got left in this B6 planner here. If I take out my old inbox page and overlay that against my B6, sorry, over my A5, you can see the size difference in that. So it's quite a drop from one size to the other, but it makes a big difference in how portable your plan is going to be. So it's really good for that. But also, if I compare that to a personal page, let me just grab my personal planner. Oh, butchering my planners this morning. Goodness. Right, so... There we go. If I overlay that one on top, then you can see that B6. Oh, actually, sorry, I've just realised this is actually personal wide. Oh, so a personal wide page <laughs> and a personal over the top of that. You can see that it's a nice in between size. If you find personal too narrow, if you find A5 a bit too big and a bit too bulky, then personal wide or B6 is a lot better. It's a good middle ground. Now I'm dealing with personal wide and B6 kind of in the same sort of breath really because there's not much in them. So B6 is only a tiny little bit bigger than personal wide. But I'll come to that in a bit more detail in just a minute. So going to show you then why B6 is tricky but it shouldn't be. So let me give you a little bit of information then on these planner sizes. So a bit of background. You are hopefully used to me talking about A5 paper. Now A5 is not just the name of this particular size, it's an A paper system. So, which is why A5 and A6 have got the same kind of proportions. So A6 is half of an A5 page. So if you were to cut it in half that way, that would be A6. Now with B paper sizes, they're kind of the same. So with A5, they have, sorry, A paper sizes have their own set page proportions. 
B paper sizes are the same. They added them to the A paper sizes to add a couple more variations. So we'll just put some information on the screen about that. So the dimensions of the B series paper sizes are they're a set thing. They are internationally defined. They're not very common, but they were added to give a little bit more flexibility on like these standard paper sizes. So you tend to find them quite a lot in books and things like that. So um, it's really common to get like a B6 notebook to write in, for example. So B6 for that reason tends to be quite popular. However, Let's go to the proportions for a minute. So if I show you the original B0 paper. So B0 paper is one metre across. And if you fold it in half, you get B1. Fold that in half, you get B2. Fold that in half, you get B3, so on and so forth. Until you go right down to B6. So it's got a fixed size. So true B6 should be 12.5 by 17.6 centimetres. So, gonna move on now to different brand interpretations of B6. Now this is where it gets a bit tricky. So, you are probably familiar with a range of different uh, planner shops. If, for example, you are a bit of a cloth and paper fan, uh, it tends to be, I think, in the US quite a lot because it's easier to get hold of over there than it is over here. Now, cloth and paper have a nice rounded off size that they call B6. Now, I think the problem with this comes from when you are using inches compared to millimetres and centimetres, because if you are talking about B6 in centimetres, you're going to get 12.5, 17.6. Now, that's not as easy to remember, or I suppose visualise if you're used to inches. It's not as easy to visualise as 5 by 7. So if you're used to using inches, you can probably imagine quite easily what 5 by 7 is, whereas if someone said it was 12.5 by 17.6 centimetres, you might not be quite so familiar about that. So they've rounded it to the nearest inch, which is great, but it does give a very, very slightly smaller page. Now you can see on the graphic there that I've got true B6 in the black box and the dotted line where you get the cloth and paper measurements by the side of that. There's not much in it to be fair. You can probably mix that and true B6 without seeing a massive difference. It might get in the way of your dividers a little bit if you've got true B6 dividers, but only a little bit. And the nice thing with rings is that they're quite forgiving. So you've got the little bit of, well, literal wiggle room on the rings there. However, if you are coming from B6 from Aura Estelle, Aura Estelle have quite a different page size. So their B6 page is actually 10 millimetres wider and three millimetres longer. So it's not much longer, but it's a lot wider. Now, the problem that you're gonna have with that is if you've got side tabs on your page, then they are gonna be completely hidden if you've got true B6 dividers compared to maybe inserts from Aura Estelle. So you have to be a little bit savvy with what you're going to pick. Now, my tip would be with any of these, let me just take that off the screen so I can talk to you properly for a minute. So my tip would be have a look. If you are a B6 user already, get a ruler, measure your actual page size. Is it true B6? It's easiest to check if you've got this in millimetres or centimetres. And if you're an inches person, just Google it. <laughs> like I do it's way quicker trust me so have a look what is your page width if it's coming out at 12.5 centimeters it's true b6 if it's wider then which one is it that you're going to be using because some shops might adopt these page sizes it's so tricky isn't it it shouldn't be but it's so tricky so my tip would be if you are buying b6 online have a look at the actual page dimensions and see if it goes with what you've got. If you are well and truly bought in to the Aura style system, then make sure that you use their dividers as well or make sure that you go for top or bottom tabs because their page size isn't much taller than actual B6. 
So just check and see what you're compatible with because I've had people coming to, to me to get B6 stuff and saying, oh, no, this is too small, when actually they're used to a much wider page. So that then is why it's tricky and how different brand interpretations look at that. Let's move on to what I personally would suggest that you choose. So let me get my trusty personal wide dashboard here. Now, personal wide and B6 are really, really close in size. There's not much to it. Let me just pause and grab a quick comparison for you. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> I've just literally just grabbed these out of my drawer and punched them. <laughs> so here is a B6 and a personal wide. And let me just turn this one over so you can see the size difference between them. Right, can you see that? There's not much in it. There's really, really not much in it at all. So personal wide is five millimeters narrower than B6 and it's five millimeters shorter than personal wide. So if you are shopping around for covers and you see a cover in one brand but they only make B6, a cover in another brand and they only make personal wide, which happens by the way. So uh, I think a really common one for B6 that I have bought in the past would be uh, Kiki K, some of those older ones, but if you are a bit of a Motown fan, then they do personal wide rather than B6 for their ring covers. So if you are stuck, then the cover itself doesn't really matter and I'll show you why. So this is the punchy for B6 and if I overlay that over the top you can see that when they are sitting on the holes then there is not much difference and the difference that you get is mostly at the side and it's only five millimeters so if you were to go for one over the other then personal wide would be a much much smarter choice because if you stick to that there's no variation between the sizes. You're always going to get that size. You won't get different brand interpretations or you shouldn't. <laughs> Feel free to comment if you've spotted that there are somewhere. Oh, <laughs> but there shouldn't be. So the whole spacing is the same. And do you know what? You can have one of these in a B6 cover and you'll have plenty of room. So if I just grab my old this is a B6 cover. This is my Van der Speck B6. So if I was to put B6 in here, then you can see the fit of that. It is actually quite snug top and bottom considering this is a B6 cover because the Van der Speck B6 is a quite squat. They've got like quite a square cover proportion. But if I show you how the B6, sorry, the, <laughs> the personal wide fits in here instead, then personal wide inside a B6 cover fits really nicely and you've got a little bit more room at the top for your top tabs if you want any as well. And for the side, it just means you've got a little bit more room for your pen or your side tabs. So that's really convenient, I reckon. So because you've got this extra size here, if you wanted to, then you could always use some, I'm just... This is gonna look a little bit crazy. I'm not suggesting you actually do this, but you might like to have some of your inserts, your personal size too, if you like a layering look. If you've got, for example, some vellum or a dashboard behind it, you might wanna have a personal size page over the top, so you've got a little bit of decoration to the side. If you've got a personal size insert here with a personal wide size insert behind it you could have like a dutch door kind of thing you might want to have something peeping out especially if you were to write it like across the page like that there's all sorts of different options because the page heights are the same and the punching obviously is the same so i would recommend that you go for personal size inserts and I would also recommend that if you have a choice, which of course you don't always, that you go for a B6 cover because it's a little bit more roomy because some of these come out a little bit snug. So let me just show you some of these cover differences. So I was doing some Googling last night and I was doing some measuring. So these planner covers tend to be quite different. So this is my 
B6. I wonder if the best way to show you this. So this is my B6 and how it varies. Can you see if I have got those stacked up on the table? How much difference there is in the top of those? So the bottoms are flush. Whoop, there we go. Bang them on the table. They're flush. That's how much difference there is. So you can see what we're used to dealing with here. And the sizes look from the side. If I can get those lined up as close as I can, more or less the same, but it's a different proportion. So just check and see what kind of cover you're after. If you are thinking about starting down this personal wide or B6 route, make sure the cover gives you enough room and make sure that if you're coming at this fresh, that you think about which actual paper size that you want to start off with. Right. Oh, I managed it in one go. Goodness, you should see the page of notes I've got in front of me to remind me of all these figures. I really hope that was useful. I've just realised I haven't had any of <laughs> my coffee. <laughs> Never mind. I hope that was useful for you and it's given you some idea about what you're doing if you're going to be shopping for B6 or if you're hoping to switch from one to the other. Okay, right, join me again next week. There will be more. I'm planning it already. There will be more, I promise. Watch this space. <laughs> Thank you. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.